does nobody seem to care that on paper, the Phoenix Suns are one of the greatest collections of talent we have ever seen? A bold statement, I know, but the 2024 Suns will have a 25-year-old DeAndre Aiden, a former number one pick who averaged 18 points and 10 rebounds per game last season. Their star is 27-year-old in his prime Devin Booker, a man who has already been a three-time All-Star, scored 70 points in a single game, and just had one of the best offensive playoff runs we have seen in recent memory until game six. They can score the ball and rebound. Booker misses his first shot. The second player to average a triple-double in a playoff series. Russell Westbrook, the other. Booker short that time. Booker penetrates. Gets rejected by Brown. Booker stops, pops, missed again. The Phoenix Suns season is over. The Denver Nuggets are moving on to the conference finals for the second time in four years. That game six loss was tough, but Phoenix will also have their first full season of Hall of Famer Kevin Durant, as he was only able to play in eight games after last year's trade. And then, of course, the Suns' big four are completed by a healthy, finally ready to compete three-time All-Star in Brown. Bradley Beal. Perhaps when it comes to height, Book and Beal are an inch or two shorter than you'd like. But with these four players, we have two playmaking scoring all-stars, a modern day small forward slash power forward who is one of the best players to ever live, and a big man who certainly has the talent of a number one pick, who has also proven himself in clutch moments already. Crowder looking, throws it, alley, oh! Aiden puts it down! He puts it down! Then on the other side though, the questions, perhaps even the hate at this point. Is Devin Booker a fraud and a choker? Will a known scorer in Bradley Beal actually be cool with taking less shots and fitting in? What about Kevin Durant's injury history? Is he finally too old? And DeAndre Aiden, the man who apparently hated his head coach in Monty Williams last year, will he live up to the potential or will he quit on the team like some say he did last year? What's up, Mike here, and to be honest, those are some understandable concerns. However, when we really investigate into the Phoenix Suns situation here, I am coming up with nothing but positives. I believe in this team in a very real way, as you're about to see, because the evidence is just overwhelming. If we're being honest with ourselves, I think the Phoenix Suns as a team are the easiest target right now out of everyone. However, after Devin Booker and Chris Paul were destroyed by Luka Doncic in this trash talk three game arc. Yeah. What do you think of that? Don't really care. <laughs> Everybody act tough, but they are. Everybody act tough. 27-point lead. Down goes Johnson. Three. Oh, Luka, no. oh. Luka Doncic is absolutely putting on a show here in the Valley. This shot will hang on permanent display in the Museum of Ass Kickings. The Phoenix Suns got clowned at home. Embarrassing to them. Embarrassing to the city of Phoenix. Embarrassing. Now, Lil Wayne, he'll get past it. He'll move on. Hell, I'm depressed. Get used to seeing this, Phoenix, because this image is going to haunt you. Maybe forever. After the Suns took a massive L from this, people have not respected them as they should. But before we continue, guys, I am very excited to thank DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Because if you may not have noticed, the National Football League is back, and I've partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook to hook you guys up. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And again, Sundays are for football. So new customers, all you have to do is bet $5 on any wager, and you will instantly receive $200 in bonus bets. And going even further, you can use those bonus bets on a chance at same game parlays to get an even bigger payout. And if sports betting is still not available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy, where you're going to have a shot to win cash prizes. So don't wait any longer. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, use my promo code Corzemba, bet $5 on any wager, and immediately get $200 in bonus bets. As promo code CoreZemba, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank you, DraftKings, for supporting the channel. And for now, let's get back to the video.
Last year, Phoenix was bounced from the playoffs after Book shot four for 13 with 12 points in the final loss. When you are horrible in that final game, that is all you hear. However, in the other five games Devin Booker played against the Nuggets, he averaged 34.6 points on, get this, 60% shooting. He also averaged 7.8 assists and 5.4 rebounds, proving his all-around game and for the playoffs as a whole. Book led everyone in scoring with 33.7 points per game on 58 and a half percent shooting with 7.2 assists per game and 4.8 rebounds per game. Those are not only superstar numbers. Those are the numbers of a player who can also work with another star. The perfect recipe for a championship team. Book had Chris Paul and Durant on the court when he produced those numbers just last season, which means he is used to playing with high level, high usage players. And that also means we can address the Bradley Beal fit right now. I don't think we're going to have a problem. Beal only averaged 17.6 shots a game last season. Yes, in the past, he did average over 30 points per game in a single year. That is the past. Last year, Bradley Beal also contributed 5.4 assists per game, which will be great in his role of the two guard in this combo. As the Suns have said it, and it is quite clear, they are choosing to put the ball in the hands of Devin Booker as their lead guard. They believe in Book, and looking at last year's playoff numbers, it's not hard to see why. We already talked about the base stats, but looking at Devin Booker's playoff usage rate for his career, we find that it has always been high, but it actually went slightly down last season as his true shooting percentage skyrocketed to the moon and also most importantly for this roster construction you can see that Devin Booker's assist percentage went dramatically up while also his turnover percentage went down. So I think it's very easy to look at an about to be in his prime player, such as Devin Booker or Jason Tatum, and pick that kind of player apart because of one thing. They are so good that their teams keep making very deep playoff runs, which means with all eyes on them, we only have their flaws to look at. In the NBA, it really comes down to one thing. If you don't win the title, you're gonna hear it. Jason Tatum in last year's finals was 25 years old. He took a lot of heat after losing as the second best team in the entire league. While another young player in Luka Doncic, Luka faced little to no criticism after the offseason ended because he wasn't playing in front of us. Upping the stakes here, I will actually say that we should be looking at players such as Devin Booker and Jason Tatum and pointing at them as the real potential superstars to be. What have we seen from young player after young player that has actually succeeded? Failure. We have seen failure that then is followed up by tremendous success. Kobe Bryant is of course the perfect example of this. Kobe infamously airballed four huge shots for the Lakers in game five of the 1997 playoffs, took this failure upon himself, and ended up winning five championships as one of the best players to ever do it. Young LeBron was one of the greatest players we have ever seen, and it took him nine seasons to win his first championship. Yes, some of the rosters that were built around him were not ideal. However, in 2010, the Cavs were the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, and against an aging Boston Celtics team, after going up two to one, LeBron would shoot seven for 18 in game four, which tied the series, then shot three for 14 in a 32 point home court loss in game five and finished things off with an eight for 21 shooting performance that also included, yes, 19 rebounds, yes, 10 assists, yes, nine turnovers. LeBron took failures such as this and became the second best player to ever live. If there's one thing we know for sure when looking at NBA history, it is that if a player truly loves the game and is obsessed with it, that player will at the very least have the highest chance at success. Devin Booker, if he wanted to, could have been an A-plus list celebrity star. He dated Kendall Jenner. He might still be dating Kendall Jenner. I do not know because Devin Booker is not about the famous lifestyle. Devin Booker is about putting his head down and working on his game. The results spoke for themselves. That Luka Doncic moment was legitimately embarrassing. Now, I myself went very hard at Devin Booker when Luka Doncic cooked him in that moment. I apologize, Book. I don't doubt him at all. I do think there are still two questions on this roster, which would be, of course, Kevin Durant and DeAndre Aiden. Kevin Durant last season was in one of the hardest positions a basketball player can be in. He was a superstar who was traded mid-season and was only able to play in eight games before the playoffs and then was expected to go out and still be a superstar as he looked to his left and saw Chris Paul instead of Kyrie. Despite 
this. In the playoffs, KD averaged over 29 points and nine rebounds per game with over five assists per game on around 48% shooting from the field. Yes, it is very true that Kevin Durant's three-point shot was very off in the Nuggets series. However, Phoenix still took the NBA champs to six games with all of the flaws on that roster with DeAndre Aiden, who by all reports hated his head coach. Let's watch this clip before last season. Been able to move. I haven't spoken to mine. No, I haven't spoken to him at all. Ever since the game. What happened with you here today? Yeah, I'm all right. Did anyone just hear what DeAndre Aiden said? How did we expect this to work? Whether DeAndre Aiden has the right to be a mad star like this, well, no, he doesn't. But what I will say is that as a team, as a franchise in the NBA, you have to play with the cards you're dealt. You're going to be dealt different personalities, different players in that way. Even if a player does hate the head coach in this way, he's supposed to be a professional and not allow it to affect him. Last year, the Phoenix Suns players openly, openly were mad at DeAndre Aiden on the court due to him letting this affect him. Here's where though, I think the Phoenix Suns have hit a home run in their new head coach, Frank Vogel. Sorry, Monty, you had to go. Your center is speaking crazy about you. Most importantly though, with Frank Vogel, I believe one of two things will happen. One, a happy DeAndre Aiden will anchor this team in the playoffs, or two, a happy then surprise DeAndre Aiden will be traded for a big package. It is not as if DeAndre Aiden does not have interest around the league. He was offered a max contract by the Indiana Pacers just one year ago. Phoenix had to match to keep him, and last season, despite whatever was happening, DeAndre averaged 18 points and 10 rebounds per game. The talent is there, the potential is there. That is why his teammates were frustrated. That is also why everyone currently doubts DeAndre Aiden. But at this point, we need to look at the headlines. We need to look at what Frank Vogel is saying. Recently on his podcast, Zach Lowe said that Vogel has made it a gigantic point to build a great relationship with DeAndre Aiden. And so far, this offseason, that is all we have seen when it comes to the headlines. Frank Vogel is a championship winning coach. He knows what it takes to win. It is definitely not all about just the talent out there on the court. It is about personalities. The Phoenix Suns have a lot, a lot of big personalities in this locker room. With the right coach, all of those personalities could be unlocked. And then we'd be able to answer the question, are the Phoenix Suns the greatest team on paper in NBA history? It is impossible for me to not give a defending champion that honor, of course. I will make a bold claim though. I will say on paper, the Phoenix Suns are the best team in the NBA and also so I will pick them to win the 2024 NBA championship, yes. Because if you are still doubting, well, I do agree. A lot of questions need to be answered. On paper though, if this team stays healthy, they could have two of the top 10 players in the playoffs, along with two more of the top 25. This is a classic scenario. They have the new coach that's already won a championship. Kevin Durant is a Hall of Famer with something to prove, who has also won a title and finally has a full preseason with the Suns. And Devin Booker just showed us he's ready to take a leap and become a top five player in this league. The numbers just don't lie. Everything is set up for Phoenix to be the best team in the NBA this season. I've said it. I'm predicting it. Now it's time to see what happens. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.